does take us to our talk of the tape. Worries once again, the rise in stocks is too narrow, that the so-called foundation of this market is starting to show some cracks and could be in bigger trouble if the mega cap names start to falter. One name for us in focus today, Apple. That stock has underperformed the others in the group over concerns over its sales growth, among other issues. Nice move today, though. There it is, up 1.5%, almost 190. Let's welcome in Morgan Stanley's Eric Woodring. He covers that name for that firm, and he's here for his first interview post-earnings. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Thank you, Scott. Thanks what, for having me. What's your overall read? I mean, what a nice move today. It nice is. Nice move since earnings and a nice reversal, too. What's your overall read on, on earnings since this is your first chance to, to tell us? Yeah, so uh, let's go with the good and the bad, right? So the good was December quarter, record services growth, record installed base, record spend per user on the services side, 16% operating income growth, 26% free cash flow growth. Better than expected earnings. So a good December quarter. Um, the bad was, uh, you know, the guide down. Uh, they guided about $3 billion below where we thought they would guide revenue for the March quarter. $3 billion. $3 billion. Uh, That's about not an insignificant number. On $90 billion, right. It, it's, it's not an insignificant number. It's low to mid single digits. Um, but but the, the challenge there is it's a product issue. Um, and, and really, we think it is mostly a China issue. Um, there's a challenge with demand in, in that market. It's a macro challenge. It's a competition problem. Uh, we think Apple has to solve that. But, but outside of that, I thought it was a good quarter. Okay. Why do you think the stock market is um, essentially giving Apple the benefit of the doubt right. that they're going to figure it out? I mean, a guy down, as you said, not an insignificant number. Right. Clearly a China problem. Right. So why is the stock reacting the way it is? So I think we need to go back to late 2018, early 2019. This was the that was the first time Apple negatively pre-announced in over 15 years. At the time, the challenge was weaker demand in China, China macro problems, some pricing challenges in China, and it ended up being one of the best buying opportunities for Apple investors. That's when replacement cycles, iPhone replacement cycles peaked and obviously accelerated from there. We think the setup feels very similar today as it did back then. We're going to figure out the China problem. I mean, let's let's refresh our viewers' sure. memories, too, in that we're talking about a sizable piece second of biggest revenue market. that, what is it, 20 percent, 15 percent? 20 percent. Second biggest, okay. Apple's second biggest market. Okay. How long is it going to take to figure it out? So it's been about uh, four quarters now of year-over-year -year declines in China. Uh, again, mixed, mixed results, let's call them. Mm -hmm. um, again, we think part of it is macro-driven. The China e e e economy is obviously going through some challenges. Um, but now Huawei is a, is a competitor again for the first time in four years. We think that is more of a temporary dynamic, right? Apple took back share from Huawei over the last four years when Huawei went away. It's only natural for Huawei to be more competitive when they come back. But still, they have trailing edge technology. Apple is pushing forward into AI. We think that will give them advantage over the longer term, but we need to get past this kind of nearer term share shift dynamic before we can get there. You've had a, a you know, I don't know, a, a pretty thoughtful coverage period in the conversations that we've had yeah. about this stock, very frank at times as to yeah. maybe not wanting to buy the stock at certain levels. Right which aren't that long ago, yeah, right? Yeah. Today you say you're buying the dip. Yep. You remain overweight, 220. Yeah. Um, so the stock looked like it was technically challenged for a while. The chart looked awful. Mm -hmm. And you sat here and said, you know, I wouldn't really buy it here. Maybe it was like 169 yeah. at 167, somewhere around there. What's changed? So What's changed? Uh, two things. Again, we talked about it maybe towards the end of the year. The, the Google TAC risk, the Google DOJ risk, to me, has been pushed out a bit. Still a risk to be cognizant of, but not a near-term event or negative catalyst to be wary of. The second factor is we now have a better idea, or we think we have a better idea, of what Apple's ambitions are come the developer conference in June and then the iPhone 16 launch in September. We think, and, and Tim Cook somewhat alluded to this, that they, they will introduce AI into their phone, generative AI, for the first time. We think that matters a lot. It creates your, the ability to use your phone in a whole new way, and perhaps your old phones can't give you that same experience as these new devices might. That becomes very positive for the iPhone replacement You cycle. think that's going to happen at WWDC, that sort of that'll be the That'll be the, the teaser the for it. Thing. That'll be the teaser for it. Ultimately, I think what they're going to do at the developer conference is introduce the idea of what they're going to, what they're going to bring to iOS 18. They'll also give an opportunity to kind of build out the AR, VR ecosystem from the Vision Pro that just launched. But ultimately, we think it's going to be one of the more important developer conferences we've seen in a number of years.